So good morning, boys and girls. Well done. <laughs> so today, if you remember, the past few days you've been noticing a lot of things around our walls, right? We have quotes from authors. Every day that you've been coming in, you're finding more and more words on our walls. And something very exciting is going to start this week. In fact, we're starting it today. Does anybody want to guess what it's going to be? Whoops. Anybody want? Remember, as grown-ups, these are the easy questions. Does anybody want to guess? <laughs> Tony? <laughs> yes, we're going to start our writing workshop today. And we have all of these authors, mentor authors, who are going to be our writing teachers. They're going to teach us about writing and about their writing lives. Can you believe that? We have 10 authors coming into our classroom. And they're going to show us how to be writers. I'm so, this is like my favorite, favorite time with you is to be able to have writing workshop. So the one thing to tell you, it's not that these authors are going to walk through our door. You know what they did? They wrote gorgeous books. Gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful books that I absolutely love that they share with all readers and that they are going to help us learn how to be writers just like them. So I want to share with you the 10 books that we have. And as I'm doing this, I want you to think about what are you noticing about what we're talking about with all these authors? The first book I want to share with you is called Dear Annie. This book I just love this because you know why Judith wrote this? Because she and her grandpa used to write to each other. And on the day she was born, her grandpa wrote her a card. Listen to this. Dearest Annie, welcome to this world. When I saw you the first time through the window at the hospital, you looked like a rose. That's why I chose this card. And as Annie gets older, she starts writing cards back to her grandpa. And it's a way that they communicate it and talk to each other. How special is this? For the author to think about that one little connection she had with her grandpa and to make a book out of it. Another book, oh my goodness, Karen Wallace wrote this book called Gentle Giant Octopus. What a great title for an octopus. I mean, I think I would have thought that my title would have been Ugly, Squirmy, Slimy Octopus. But she didn't write that title. She wrote Gentle Giant Octopus. Do you want to know why? She lived in Canada. Once in her life, she saw an octopus. One time when she was little. And she was so fascinated by this octopus that she thought to herself, I'm going to write a book about it. And that's what she literally did had this one moment in time, something that interested her, and she wrote about it. And she found that, uh, that an octopus was one of the most glorious animals she'd ever thought of that could exist. And you have to listen to how she wrote about this. A gentle giant octopus jets through the shadows. She's huge like a spaceship. Long tentacles fly like ribbons behind her. Silverback fish scatter before her. She used the most gorgeous language to write about this octopus. And then the coolest thing she does, I have to show you this. She uses different fonts to show us how to share more information and to show us how an octopus kind of floats around. She writes the words as if it's part of the water. How cool is that? What a great writerly tactic craft that she's used in her book here. Amazing. So, now we have one book that has to do with a memory and a connection. Another book that has to do with an interest. We also have a book from Aliki, who is one of my favorite authors, and all about how you make a book. It's a how-to book. How cool is that? And who would have thought that there was so much work that was involved in doing this? Do you love this book? So another author wrote about just how something is done. And what I love with the leakies is that there's labels and captions and all sorts of interesting information. And look at all the colorful pictures in there, the illustrations, just like a comic book. And I'm thinking that as an author, a leaky must have been thinking to himself, I wonder if everybody knows how much work goes into a book. 
Like maybe one day he was having dinner and maybe she was having dinner and maybe somebody looked at her and said, so you done with your book yet? And I bet you she probably thought, do you know how long it takes to write a book? Do you know how much work is involved in this? I'm going to write a book about that. I bet you that's what she did. This book, oh my gosh, How to Talk to Your Dog, Jean Craighead George did another how-to book. This is so neat, the way she did this. She takes us through how to talk to a dog and tells us what all the little things that a dog does, like wagging its tail, um, when it barks, when it pants, what does it mean? But the other cool thing she did with her illustration, she has a real picture of herself and then like a cartoon picture of the dog. And she will tell you, like, what is this dog talk? She'll ask everything with a question to answer. How do you say to your dog, I am boss? I know I watch the dog whisperer, and I try to use some of that to tell my dog that I am the boss. It doesn't work because the dog appears to be a people whisperer and is telling me that she is the boss. But again, how to talk to... So what are we noticing so far about some of these books that I'm showing you? What, what can we say about the kinds of things that authors write about? They write about things they know and things that, ha that happen to them, right? Things that they're interested in. Another book we have here, another author, Paul... Uh, Jeanetsko has this wonderful book called A Kick in the Head. This is the coolest book because, first off, unbelievable illustrations. And I really love, like when I read a book, I like to be interested by the pictures and drawn in by the pictures. And I also, you know, of course, the story too. So when I get both of those, I'm so incredibly happy. And in this book, instead of it being just a regular poetry book, you know that when we had to write poetry before we had open school night, if you remember, your parents were coming and we wrote poetry? This book tells us all different kinds of poetry. So if you ever wanted to know what a roundel is, it's in the book. Not only is it here in the book, it gives us a description of what it means. So this is like the best reference book for poetry. And there's one particular, let me see if I can find it for you. This one book, if you think about this one poem, if you think about it, like I always thought poets had to write about beautiful, glorious moments, sunsets and sunrises, and the water lapping at my toes. I have since found out that sometimes you can write poetry, it might be called an ode, and it might be to your smelly sneaker. And how great is that, that all of a sudden I could write poetry about a smelly sneaker? I could do that. I could write about smelly sneakers, smelly shoes. I could write about my husband's smelly shoes. Um, I could write about a lot of things. I have three boys at home. I could write a lot of, about a lot of messy things and make beautiful poetry out of it. How great is that? So, so many ideas here. Our favorite author, Cynthia Ryland, wrote Night in the Country in just gorgeous, beautiful language. And you know what she did? She listened and she watched. She just observed. So you can see we have a lot of authors here who are going to help us become the best writers we can be. And we're going to be kind of experiencing multiple ways of being able to write, which I think is just so wonderful. Our Vera Williams, we read um, My Mother's Chair. She's written another book called Three Days on a River in a Red Canoe. And it's all about going camping. And it's another book that tells me a story, but also tells me how to tie knots. And it also tells me about camping, and it tells me all about the different parts and puts in captions and diagrams of her campground and where she was in the river. Like, I've learned.